Kramer, Britain. We're talking best bets here. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna be optimistic. I put everyone down for the over eight and a half wins. Check. Division. Ryan, division. Check. I will be sprinkling Sean, the division we, as well. Can we uh, have accounting free up some resources to parlay the Titans and the Steelers divisions? Do we throw the Bucks in there? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. All right, the retirement so, play. <laughs> yes, get the ladder out. Get uh, the ladder out. Well, what, can I le can I lead off with the Steelers' last undefeated team? Okay, what with is that, that at? With that Charmin soft schedule, <laughs> potentially they could go eight and zero. Yeah. 20, 28 to one. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Britain. Can I put you down for that one as well? Does that sound? I mean, it, it sounds beautiful. And also I'm, so I'm one of the people, I don't know if this is against the, your religion or not, but like, uh, you know, if they're six and zero, oh, and I've got a 28 to one, then I will, you know, start playing against them a little bit. Maybe it's with the spread. Maybe it's with the teaser, you know, try to get a little double dip there. But again, I just always look for those big numbers because again, you know, everyone's like, well, mathematically, you know, it's actually dumb to hedge and all this stuff. You know what? Not dumb, making money. So make yeah. it however you can because they're not just giving it out at the sports book. Well, that is a good it, counter. I actually that that's one of the rare cases where like it's the same for like futures. Like I don't always necessarily view a single game adjustment bet as a full hedge because I'm never going full hedge. Now in this case. I I would be well, shocked, especially if you can find a middle. If you're finding a middle, that is not hedging. That's slightly different. If you can win both sides, yeah. Oh, that's actually a great loophole. Yes, great job. Thank L you. Lawyers found the uh, <laughs> found a flaw in this. It is contract. it is fun to make fun of well, yeah, hedgers it, and calling it, them gardeners. Yeah, it is it is against my religion. <laughs> so, I don't I don't hedge a ton, but again, it to 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 uh, Britain's situation like hey if you can start you know playing against them cuz obviously if they are eight no maybe some of these numbers move and all of a sudden they're oh. favorites and again we don't like them covering as favorites historically so hey you know AFC matchup AFC North all of a sudden they're laying four points no thank if you they're 7 and 0 oh. And they're playing the Giants week eight. Of course, <laughs> oh, I'm going to take a little piece of the Giants. Oh, okay. Well, that, on that, the money line, that's not a hedge. I love the Giants. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> what else do you like in the uh, in the market here for the Pittsburgh Steelers? You want uh, me? Uh, Britain, well, yeah, I, Britain, I was yeah, going to say something else to uh, really make the sharps mad, if I if I may. Oh, nice. yes. yes. Teasing through zero in the AFC North is a smart thing to do. Oh, yeah, no. it, 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 they're on, all they're all such close oh, games. God. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, oh my. And again, people are like, well, then if you're gonna tease through zero, why don't you just money line? If they, you know what I mean? Like all this, all this stuff where they'll say actually mathematically it's better. And it's like, okay, when there's 12 seconds left and the ball is bouncing around off of receivers <laughs> and DBs' hands and someone catches it, either it determines the game either way. Are you saying, well, mathematically I made the right play? You know, so I will say this team, the way that Tomlin plays every game so close, teasing through zero actually can be good. That's the that's when you play the Tomlin. I'm working here, me. <laughs> I'm working. Yeah, exactly. Someone tries to explain the math on why it's not a good bet. You just reply with that. <laughs> I'm fucking working here. Yeah, you know, because you know zero is not a number. Did you know that zero is not a number? <laughs> oh, I mean, I yeah. will say uh, one of the things I have fantasized about. I think the podcast is coming out after we'll already be in Vegas, Sean. But is is someone try? I dare like someone daring to go down a math conversation with oh. me on on something because they they assume I'm a uh, some sort of donkey. I just can't wait. I mean, that's that's my dream. It's oh, you want to talk donkey. math? All right. Uh, what about uh, any other any other future plays you like oh, here, Britain? Oh yeah, I've got a few, and I'll get to underdog last. Uh, obviously, still 185 to make the playoffs when it's a team that's always in the uh, playoff conversation, always fighting for that last couple, last spot or two uh, when the last couple of weeks of season are up. But my favorite bet is one that was at William Hill in Nevada. Steelers divisional wins higher than two and a half, oh. plus 100. Even Whoa. money, even money. That's I was going wrong. back year by year. I got to 2011 and it just got dumb because I'm like, no, they'd never lose more than three games in this division. <laughs> uh, they, they've never finished last in this division as long as it's existed. And even when they have quote unquote down years, you know, an eight and eight year in 2019, they were three and three in the division. Uh, you know, and I said last year, 10 and seven, half their wins came in the division, came in this vaunted division that is so difficult to win in. Um, so I think that that's just kind of a, total outlier and it's a little smaller market that not as many people are really even aware exists. So I think that's why there's such good value there. 
next time you're in Vegas, I would recommend that's everywhere. To see that, that you can get that anywhere. It's um, I know a DK fan. They all have some version of it. Plus one hundred, plus one hundred five. It's it. It's. I'm shocked that it's not. Uh, they're just. They're just. They forget who Tomlin is every year, Sean. Like the, the nerds making these numbers. You know what it is? This is the intern markets. They give the divisional markets to the interns. That's yeah, why they're like, soft. Uh, you're you're just cutting your teeth. Take a look here. They, they they're too young. They don't have the history with Mike Tomlin. Do it with six games first. <laughs> it's just funny because people are um you know, they're, they're, they're trying to be smart about it. They look at the uh preseason spreads and they're like, well, you know, this makes sense. And it's how how do we not have a big enough sample size on Tomlin to understand that uh, you know that that spread is pretty irrelevant in the division? Uh, and then also, you know, what's the other adage you hear a lot of sharps say in the NFL is that if you're going to play the underdog, you might as well play the money line. You know what I mean? How many times are you going to be tempted to take the Steelers as a four or five point under road underdog in the division, and you're like, I'm going to take the points, and then they're going to win that game outright, and you're like, oh, I wish I had the money line. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of competing uh, sharp angles, which is the, uh, you know, the schedule nerding out, but also with the, with the look ahead lines, but then also like, you know, Hey, if you're going to play the underdog. You might as well play the money line. Well, with Tomlin, you got to play, you, you know, you just got to assume with, I would say this approach betting on Tomlin as if he's standing next to you. <laughs> Do you really want Tomlin to look over your shoulder and see a plus five? No, <laughs> yeah. get that money line out. No. Don't be soft. Come on. Donate to the church. I'll go to my second best bet next, though, which is Friar Muth higher than three and a half receiving touchdowns Ooh, plus yes. one fifteen. I mean, again, Russell Wilson loves tight ends. He re he really does. As I said, he made Will Disley a kind of a household name just because of the primetime games where all of a sudden he's the you know the third string tight end is breaking up the sideline. Obviously, you know Friar Muth is the good the guy that's going to be on the field the most out of all of these players. Uh, you know, it, it, it would involve Russell Wilson throwing over the middle, but again, he's a big target. And they have enough running backs that it's not like they could just blanket the tight end in the red zone uh, because Arthur Smith's not afraid to, to pound the rock. So I think that there's going to be a lot of good matchups for Friar Muth as a red zone target. Uh, and as you alluded to earlier, he also is a pretty good seam threat and deep threat for a tight end. If Ayuk is there, you know, people are going to worry about that. But I think it honestly helps Friar Muth, especially in the red zone, uh, because you've got to pay a lot of attention to pickings going up for jump balls. Ayuk, obviously, great route runner, great athlete. So I think Fryermuth is going to get plenty of looks to get higher than three and a half touchdowns this season. Yeah, I co-sign that one. Co-sign that one. Co-sign your division play. It feels a little safer than the um, than the yards for whatever reason, but I think Fryermuth's just not priced for what he's going to be in this offense. I think. Yeah, cer certainly the uh, your uh, early breaking of the Ayuk news could definitely hurt me there, but. I would bet on Friar Muth being a guy. Like we're gonna get to hear the announcer say, "No, they're not booing. They're saying <laughs> Muth." Uh, what any, do you got, Sean? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I I'm obviously high on Friar Muth. I think even like if you're looking for a crazy long shot, um, Pat Friar Muth to lead the AFC North in receiving touchdowns. They don't have the price on that, but I, that you're gonna get crazy odds and, um. You know, Fryermuth did have an outlier season. Like his first year was seven touchdowns. Him getting to eleven touchdowns, I think, is a possibility. Uh, if they end up using him a wow. ton in the red zone, That'd like I, I think there is a ceiling case for Fryermuth touchdowns, not yards, but touchdowns. Uh, we'll see what they price that at. That would be the only one I'm looking to add. But last undefeated division, over eight and a half wins, make playoffs, the division wins. Like this is this is who they are. This is how they make us money. Any interest in Pickens? Um, I don't know. Pickens, I'm not touching as much. His his touchdown total, he went over last year. Yeah. What do you you like any Pickens I'd stuff? Put me down for Pickens touchdowns too. I I mean they they threw for 17 touchdowns with that abomination of a quarterback situation <laughs> yeah. with Arthur Smith in Atlanta. No, last year I was so I I, I certainly think that the idea that these two, like Fryermuth and Pickens, ending the season with like eight and five touchdowns, seems very real, like very conservative. I have no problem projecting that. So George Pickens over uh, how many touchdowns are in? Four and a half. Four and a half. And, well, I may, uh, I, one of those will be my underdog play. Those are two available on underdog as well. So oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So we we so. can uh, we can get, chop it up. You want to keep chopping stuff. All right. I'll give you I'll give you uh Fryermuth as a regular play and uh Pickens as your underdog play there, right? Perfect. But I, I'm copying uh 
I'm copying Sprinton's and cause even uh, they, the hire is a little spicy there. So uh, always adding a little spice to my slip. Let's take a look here. See what we got for our best bets. I mean, uh, big picture. We're high on the Steelers. Well, I gotta say, uh, I got one more. I got one oh, more little awesome. that I'm in. What else you got? You know, I, I've been, I'm just so excited that I can be optimistic with some new change in, in Pittsburgh <laughs> and all that. Uh, so Najee Harris thousand plus rushing yards is plus 180. And Jalen Warren, thousand plus rush yards is plus six hundred. I'm taking both. Mm, I'm, yes. I'm taking both. One of these guys is getting a thousand yards, and there is a real chance that both could. I mean, Najee was a thousand thirty-five last year, and Warren was at seven eighty-four last year. Obviously, we expect there to be more rushing here, and I actually expect Warren to be the lead back in a lot of games this season. I think that. Najee Harris is good. A lot of people are like, oh, he's so slow. He's so slow. It's like, no, he's not slow. He's just really indecisive. The real problem with Najee's game is that when the play blows up, he's really bad at getting back to the line of scrimmage or getting one or two yards. He's like, oh, I'm going to go pop Warner mode and try to make nine guys miss, which is not going to work in the NFL. Uh, but obviously on big plays, he looks good. He actually moves pretty well for his size, all things considered. It's just his problem is uh, getting those tough yards when the play isn't developing. And Warren is the complete opposite of that. You know, there could be nine D tackles in front of him and he's going to lower his head and get a yard somehow. Uh, so I think both of these guys, though, are have a real shot at getting a thousand yards. And I think that at least one of them is going to get a thousand yards about 90 percent of the time. So I would say playing both is a good way to kind of I, I hate to say it, lock in a profit. But I think that you're going to be by week 12, you're going to be looking at these guys rushing numbers and say, oh, man, I can't believe there was plus money for both of them to get a thousand yards. Uh, I would love to be able to take Justin Fields to have the most <laughs> rushing touchdowns in the division. Oh, okay. Yeah. All the AFC, a Not lot of the, the AFC North division stuff. And I'm, co -si I'm co signing Britain's uh, take because, again, if one of them gets hurt, well, then, then you're very, in a very good spot to get a thousand. I mean, maybe there's this small window where, like, they both are like nine something, but I, I'm with you. I, I, and even if you had to choose one, I don't mind the Jalen Warren at six to one, um, and obviously I like the Najee too. Najee is going to get the volume. That's that's a lock. Yeah. That's a crazy plus money bet. I, I maybe we we talk to Benson out at the circuit and see what we can do about this. Just, that I'm, no one's listing Justin Fields and even the overall most rushing touchdowns market. I would take Justin Fields to have the most rushing touchdowns in the entire league. Well, you need like two hundred to one, right? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the crazy price. That's it what did. I'm here for. <laughs> Don't say whatever because an offshore is yeah. going to list it at twenty to one now. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to take twenty to one, but I. I would imagine he's got. Well, he's not even. Enough. He's not even a name to start. Yeah, but so, Sean, when yeah. he scores on the no, floor, I'm with you. in week one when he has like ten plays and he scores two touchdowns, we're gonna be like, whoa. Yeah, I mean, him having some sort of like Taysom Hilly type role, I think, is very much in the realm of possibility. I just can't wait. The Steelers can't invented wait. that. Don't you remember a guy named Slash? Yeah. Yeah. Cornell you know, Stewart. They, 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 we've got a long history of using athletes to score points. I mean, Antoine Randall, Elf, former college QB, turned into a wide receiver. Uh, you know, Heinz Ward was a college QB. So there is a lot of, uh, or high school QB, but there's a lot of uh, history of just getting the job done with guys, no matter what there is. Because everybody's a role player on this team. Yeah. I said that earlier, and they are all a role player. If Justin Fields' role is to, uh, you know, make the de de defense indecisive in the red zone, then that's what they're going to do with him. Uh, I did. So we we've only spoken about defensive player of the year once. Sean. Yeah. Uh, and it's the it's the last thing we we uh, at least I need it. TJ Watt is plus five fifty. Any <laughs> interest in taking the chalk on TJ Watt defensive player of the year? Um, because he's obviously winning it. If the, if my <laughs> version of the season happens, yeah, I mean, why not? I don't yeah, have any dollars for that bets. Too. Because that, and I'll probably he's, that, he's chalk, but he's chalk for a good reason. I mean, I like should have won it last year. Yeah, yeah, I, that's I, the other thing. That's it's like the makeup that's a good call. point. I mean, he had nineteen sacks and didn't win it last year. Um, so yeah, run it back at plus five fifty. And I. The, w one more, but so far we have I have Max Crosby <laughs> and T.J. Watt, and I'm gonna have one more on. The oh, season. okay. Defensive I player. Yeah, I like. I like. No, the, no more bets for the Steelers. I think I like Jalen Carter. Um, we'll see. I'm seeing Circa is at like 65 true. to one. Still like, uh, still like that. Uh, but it was as high as 100 to one earlier. Uh, Britain, 
Appreciate you hopping on. Here are our best bets. Kramer, the super fan, 12 and 5. I'm 11 and 6. Thank you. Britain coming in at 10 and 7. Make sure you follow Britain on X at Britain Hess. Give out a lot of fun oh, plays look at here. All these bets we have. I know. We need, almost Sean, need your a second. font's tiny. <laughs> almost need a second. How did you get more than me? What the fuck? <laughs> well, I gave myself Jalen Warren oh, and Najee. Make playoffs, too. Yeah, and I squeezed in the make playoffs. I, I didn't feel that was necessary. <laughs> Doesn't fit your value. <laughs>